Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Cordia Beverly, the Assistant Dean for Community Health Policy at the School of Medicine. One of the goals of the Community Outreach Strategic Plan for the medical school is to engage the expertise of the biomedical informatics faculty to strengthen the training of medical students and residents in population health by increasing their knowledge and the use of various data sources to improve the health of the communities that they will be expected to serve. Last January, Mary Sauls, Jonas Almedia, Yvonne Spreckles and I offered a required educational module for 134 preclinical medical students. The course was entitled Integrating Big Data, the new approach to improving population health in Suffolk County. In one of the modules called uh, Health Commissioner for a Day, the students were divided into 11 groups. They reviewed several health data sources and Cody Pomeroy, who is an MPH MBA student at Stony Brook, uh, will present an analysis of the Suffolk County health problems identified and the recommendations made by the medical students. Raja Pillay, one of the medical students who participated in Health Commissioner for a Day, will provide the student's perspective on the role of biomedical informatics and telehealth and the role they can play in medical education as well as population health. Uh, Cody. My name is Cody Pomeroy. I am a public health and MBA uh, graduate student here at Stony Brook working on my practicum with Dr. Beverly. Uh, and as part of that practicum, we were working on two different programs. One of them, the one I'm going to be talking about today, is the Health Commissioner for a Day program. So this was a means of integrating big data into medical education to really take that education outside of the usual scope of doctor-patient mentality. So what was this program about? This was a new module set in the transition to clinical care uh, stage of their education where it looked to take biomedical informatics data and apply that through cultural competence and health literacy practices to healthcare delivery and population health improvement. In other words, getting a chance to actually really see what the community is like using data as the medium to understand it before the patient ever walks into the door. So how was this done? After a number of different uh, lectures about these various topics, they were ultimately introduced to a number of secondary data sets as well as different benchmark goals. So whether through the Suffolk County Prevention Agenda, Healthy People 2020 and the like, they looked at this data, got a chance to understand what the population of Suffolk County looked like, and then from there were tasked to provide at least three, most of them did many more, uh, different solutions to a certain health problem that they identified. So if we know that this health issue is at 15%, we want it to be at 12. Here's something that we can do to address that. So these were the data sets that they ultimately looked at. So as I said, a number of them, everything from Sparks, BRFSS, uh, the Suffolk County Prevention Agenda Dashboard, number of different data sets to really get a broad-based view and a full kind of complete picture through the data of what Suffolk County looks like. Of these, there were 11 groups in total, and among the groups, the topics that they ultimately chose revolved around obesity, heart disease, alcohol abuse, opioids, mental health for the uninsured, and then smoking-related diseases. Uh, for the sake of an example and kind of segue moving forward through all this, I'm going to focus a little bit more on the smoking-related diseases, but these were all the different topics that they otherwise chose and provided a number of different solutions on. So. Broad-based findings in this sense, uh, after they put through their proposals, uh, combing through all of the literature on their different ideas, found that more than half of them actually had evidence of effect already through evidence-based research, and that if implemented, would likely see a similar effect. Additionally, that a number of existing programs and infrastructure already existed on the island, that they could not only take these different proposals with evidence-based research behind them, but work to collaborate or augment existing programs to really have that much more of an impact and really bolster the Suffolk County community. And then speaking in particular again to that smoking-related diseases proposal, uh, this was the data that they ultimately put forward. So effectively found, as we all know, smoking is a major issue worldwide. Uh, in the case of Suffolk County, the numbers are actually better than uh, the state average, but still didn't quite meet that Suffolk County prevention agenda level, so they said, we're gonna work on that, we're gonna put some ideas out there. This ended up being their proposal, uh, so every team chose a name. They were the plastic straws. This was about a year ago. I 
don't think they realize how contentious that name would probably be a year from now, but we'll, we'll let it slide. Uh, but they ultimately put out 11 different ideas for this. Uh, I highlighted some of them here. So everything from financial incentives uh, against tobacco advertisements, a campaign against vaping, which is actually something already in the works here in Suffolk County, an initiative is being started. Uh, community programs for those looking to quit, school speakers who have been affected, uh, Medicare benefit enrollment, and then in particular, one I want to focus on a little bit is the idea of an app that predicts health changes with X years of smoking. So in other words, if, you know, let's say a person is smoking two packs a day, they suddenly quit down to one, this app would be an interactive way for them to see how their health is expected to change and really create a kind of interactive interface for them to uh, engage with the smoking cessation that they're trying to do. So when this idea came out through all the proposals, we really took a moment to look at it and thought to ourselves, wow, there's a lot of value with this. And it really worked to further the conversation with the BMI department who we had been uh, collaborating with for this entire program. And we really sat down and thought, wow, there's a lot of potential in an app like this. So whether through that patient engagement, a means for patients to directly uh, work with something to help them quit, to allow for better provider connection, so really improving the patient response to help them with their smoking cessation, and also even on the other side of things, provide an interprofessional experience so that we could bring together things like computer science, like business, like healthcare providers, to really create an effective new product to tackle something like this. So, with all of that being said, the future directions that we felt for this kind of a program moving forward were that we really want to continue to further that biomedical informatics data approach to medical and other healthcare professional education, and seeing the different ways that when we work outside that scope of the patient doctor mentality, you can really start to engage a community and create more large scale effective change and that there's a lot of potential to do something like this to really engage with the, some of the specific ideas that are proposed. For instance, something like this app that in the same way can really have a lot of potential future effect moving forward. So now to speak a little bit on his own experience with this, uh, being part of that team and part of this whole process, I would like to introduce Raja, one of our own medical students from Stony Brook Medicine, to speak on his experiences. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Raja. Um, as was mentioned, I am a third, well, I'm a third year medical student now, uh, year seven of eight in the MD-PhD program, so I'm tired. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, so I just wanted to share some of my experiences with this um, really at that point unique workshop. I think it was really valuable um, because well, as many of you know, part of the main, one of the main issues in dealing with patients is forming a differential diagnosis. And with that, you have to think about what is the predictive value of what your diagnoses are. And if something is more prevalent in the community you're in, that's going to go higher up on your differential. And so looking at community public health data in our specific area is really valuable because if you're treating in patients in Suffolk County who have, say, a higher incidence of breast cancer than in other places, you're going to be more on the lookout for it. And that's not something we necessarily think about that much, especially in the earlier years of medical school. Uh, so one of the reasons we decided to tackle smoking is because smoking is, and you saw several of the others, such as obesity, heart disease, alcohol use, it, they are related to smoking, and some with like heart disease, there is, is even a, um, like a partial causal relationship established. So by getting down to the goals of Suffolk County, I think it was 12.3%, we can actually tackle multiple diseases at once. And the reason we thought of an app in particular is, um, well, it's sort of inspired by a lot of successes in other fields. So many of you are probably familiar with the, um, with the, uh, I'm blanking on the acronym, the ASVCD, um, a heart disease risk calculator brought about by the Framingham Heart Study, which basically puts in individual data about a particular person and says, okay, what is your risk of heart disease compared to the average person your age? And something like that with smoking could be really valuable because a lot of the advice that we give patients is sort of abstract. This could happen to you in the future. If you actually have a number that you can attach to it, it it's really helps sort of ground it for patients. So that was our main motivation. <laughs> 